Alright folks, part two here, actually part three. Um, Alright, we're going to show you what's in the pack for this particular trip. I am, I am a hammock uh, dweller, tree dweller, dweller I guess. Uh, I have a new hammock I've been using this season. It's the uh, new one from uh, Dutchwear, the Chameleon. And uh, I made a couple of changes on it. To lower the weight even less than what he's he's saying and I will get into that when we get into camp at some point I'll show you what I've done but this is my uh, Hennessy I'm uh, not excuse me not Hennessy Hennessy this is my hammock gear rain top it's Cuban fiber it's camo and um, I do use the Dutch wear wasps on both ends and I'll show you that when we get in the camp uh, it's the easiest setup uh, really nice but this this here comes in I used to have a Hennessy setup that was everything came in at four and a half pounds and, and it was good you know I learned a lot it, it, it served me well I still have it I kind of use that in the winter because it's, it's heavy duty it's the Explorer uh, so now my summer setup I'm going much lighter this comes in at nine ounces, I believe. Ten ounces because I have the twelve footer, not the uh, not the eleven footer. This is the twelve footer. Uh, extends further so I can hang my pack and clothes underneath the at either end of my hammock. In case it rains, it stays dry. Uh, so this is it. Uh, I keep this right on top. So if if there's a rain shower coming in and I need to get under cover, I have this accessible right on top. I don't have to. Uh, uh, you know, empty my whole pack to get to it. So there it is. That, that's the first thing that's on top of my ring. And then I also keep on top, this is my Tokes 750 Miller uh, millimeter uh, pot. And I, I have a cozy for it, a koozie that I made out of a reflective. And uh, here's the pot right here. Now inside, I also have my uh, GSI coffee cup. Uh, you can put hot chocolate in here, soup during the day. And then inside that is, this is my little burner. I'll show you this, I'll take this out later. This comes in at 0.8 of an ounce, not even an ounce is burner. Um, and then I keep, I keep uh, my flint and two big lighters in here. Um, my sponge cloth with a little bit of uh, um, soap on there, and then my uh, Tokes foldable uh, spoon. That all goes right in here. So everything is nice, nicely compact. Uh, fits right in here. And I carry a little rag to uh, clean up uh, afterwards. That goes right in there. And then you put the cover on, and then uh, I have a little net here that I keep it all together so it stays protected. Uh, so that's my quick here. I'm going to go gas. My wife talked me into it. I was going to go alcohol, but this is a long trip, uh, so I uh, the gas bottle will work out better for me on this particular trip. These are my steaks. Uh, a lot of people don't like these, but I love them. These are the titanium shepherd hooks. I think they're eight inches. These are the eight inch ones. Never, never, never had a problem with these. And I go in hard soil. Yeah, once in a while you got to put it in and you got to move it just an inch to get around a rock or a root. But and I put them in on an angle like this. So if my if my string is coming down like this, this goes in at a forty five degree angle. So there's no way that this is coming. And this this stuff, I've never. You're not going to bend these. Uh, so I have. I have these here, and I have I have uh, four extra in case I have to set up on ground with my trekking poles. Um, I can have two two lines coming off my trekking poles to support to support my trekking pole, which now will 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 just support my rain fly and my hammock. But my hammock will be on the ground, but it just gives me room like a tent. I can walk inside of it and zip it up and. Uh, um, so that's in case I have to go to ground if there are no trees. We are doing the top. We are doing the Tahoe Rim Trail in September, and half of that, the desolation wilderness area, 
uh, there aren't that many trees. I may have to go to ground there a few times. Uh, so anyway, that's why I have that there. I carry, and I just keep it in. I just carry it. All right, so now I have a plastic trash pine battery bag here. And I just put a few things up here. This is my electronics bag. I'll get into this later. I have a uh, 20,000 milliamp cell charger in here. I have my cables. I have my... Um, uh, um, SD card, mini SD cards in here for storage. I have a little gizmo that plugs into my phone and you put a US, mini USB card in it and you can download all your photos and videos onto this little card. So you don't need those big hard drives or, or remote drives. All you need is just a little mini card. I have two 256 gigabytes and I have, I think, 428 gigabytes. And again, that's a lot of memory, but I'm getting ready for a bigger trip. And I, I want to make sure I have a storage so I don't have to delete anything. And I have all my cables in here. Uh, so everything, everything is in here, and it's in a watertight bag. And, that's how, and I'll get into that on another, on another trip. I have my knee braces occasionally. I have to go with my knee braces on here. And so I carry those right here, something that I'm just trying. This is the first time I've used these. But I get hiker knee occasionally. And we're starting in Canada and going south. And, uh, and, and I remember I did that a few years ago, and I ended up developing hiker knee because it, it's like a 60-degree. That Jay Peak, going up Jay Peak in northern Vermont is extremely, extremely vertical. And, uh, it's, it's, and the, steps of, the stones are like 30-inch steps uh, to get up and over those rocks and roots, and I developed the problem. So I'm, I'm just, I mean, these only weigh two ounces each. So this whole pack, oh, and I have another rubber band for the top um, of, of my kneecap. Uh, this it comes in at five ounces, but I'm taking it anyway, just to be on the safe side. Um, a lot of people are going to those, those IT bands, they call them. So this is my hammock. This is my chameleon hammock. Uh, I think this comes in at 21 ounces, I believe, and I have the straps in here. So basically, this is this is my whole sleeping setup right here. It comes in at uh, a little under two and a half pounds. Rain, fly, and hammock with all the hardware straps and everything. So not not bad. This is it. Little little tiny package. I really like that. And uh, the wife just bought the. Um, z packs duplex and i'm dying to take that out try that out uh, we, we haven't been able to get out yet so this is a, a z pack i'm getting into z pack i'm starting to uh like their gear uh this is my puffy my yellow bean goose down puffy and i have it in this uh reversible uh, this is the small bag the z pack pillow that you stuff with clothes in that and uh, the, so, so now this, it acts as a water, this is waterproof too. So this acts as a separate waterproof bag for my Puffy and it acts as a storage bag for my Puffy. Uh, I haven't tried this out. This will be the first time I try this out. I had been using the uh, green air pillow thing. And uh, you got to blow, you got to fill it up with your warm breath at night. And then when the temperature goes down, you know, warm air, cool, when it cools, condenses, and I always found it was like a pancake. So hopefully this will hold, this is not going to shrink on me at night or, or deflate at night. So depending on what I put in there to puff it up, it will stay right there. So I'm going to try that out. Uh, I think I'm going to like it. Okay, I always bring my uh, down, L.L. Bean down, Gloves, they, they, they weigh two ounces, but you should always have gloves. And you get to these summits, and a front has gone, especially in New England, we'll get a front that will come through. And I mean, the temperatures will drop to uh, in the 40s, and that might not seem cold, but it is when you're hiking in the 80s or 90s, and all of a sudden it goes down to 40, you're freezing. So I always, and I have a little beady wool hat, I always take it. It's just, if that's a safety, you should always take a, a beanie and gloves. That's a must. You got to take it. Uh, I have a pair of uh, insoles, replacement insoles. They're uh, Dr. Scholl's. They're the foam, um, 
because I get wet, I can put dry insoles in it, and I use these a lot, especially when I'm in camp. Um, I'll use these. These, uh, these, they weigh nothing. I don't even know if they weigh an ounce. Uh, I've used these quite a bit, so I highly recommend taking an extra pair of these with an extra pair of camp socks, uh, which I'll get into later another time. All right, this is my first aid kit. Comes in at about 14 ounces. I know that's heavy, but I'm highly allergic to bee stings. I mean, I got to get a shot within 30 minutes or just bury me in the trail because that's what's going to happen. And uh, I have uh, gauze in here, uh, Benadryl. Um, I have two EpiPens and uh, just very few Band-Aids, very few gauze pads. But we were hiking last week, uh, not last week, a couple weeks ago, and a guy sliced, he was doing something with his knife, and he sliced his hand, and he hit that main artery in his hand. We had just got there afterwards that they were putting pressure on it and trying to bandage them up. And I'm thinking, my first aid kit, I always keep at the bottom of my pack, because how often are you going to use it? And I'm thinking, if something happens, I come across somebody or myself, uh, and, and, you know, b blood's coming out, and I got to go through my pack to get everything. So I keep a few things, like I said, in, um, in, in, in my pouch up here. Uh, and, and then now I also carry, it's called Vet Tape. I had a friend, Mark, uh, turn me on to that. Really like that. Get it on Amazon. It's super cheap. Uh, it's, it's for vets, but you can use it. Um, not for vets. It's for, uh, dog, you know, your pets. Uh, and uh, it's it's a wound, it's a dressing you know for wounds and but you can use it on, on humans too it's uh, so I have a roll of that in here uh, look at look it up on Amazon you'll find you get them in a package usually five rolls in a package so I have that on here so that's my first aid kit I got to keep going because this thing's gonna time out on me again uh, because I do very few zeros if any I have my own shower kit right here this comes in at three ounces. Uh, I'll show you how I made it uh, when I set it up on the trail. Um, it's, it, uh, basically, it's another uh, Avenue bag, two-liter bag, and then I made up the little shower head with the little uh, clip-ons for the hose, and then I have uh, uh, a towel, just a small 12 by 12 inch uh, uh, quick-drying nylon towel, and then I have a little uh, package of uh, uh, those little cloths, dry cloths for showers and laundry. And I do my laundry on trail too. Uh, I don't know why people keep going into towns. They suck you. You can't get out once you get in those towns. Um, my air mattress that I use in my hammock. This time of year I don't use an underquilt. I use an air mattress. And this is a thermal air mattress. This is X-Ped. Uh, in the winter I have a 4 inch X-Ped that is a mummy shape. It's full size. And it's a 6.6 R rating. This one is two and a half inch. It's 3.3 R rating. So it is insulated. And this will get me down into 39 degrees, 38 degrees in my hammock without an under quilt. And this comes in under a pound. So this is, this is what I use in case I go to a shelter or if I have to go to ground. I'm not sleeping on the ground. I got to have an air mattress. So that's, this is it. This is my, it takes care of my hammock. And if I have to go to ground or if I, if I want to just stay in a shelter, this is what I use right there. Um, this is my bag of uh, sleeping clothes, which I use a, a light thermal pants, light thermal top by Sierra. Uh, and I have spare undershorts, sleeping socks. I have camp shorts, really light. They only come in at four ounces, but they camp shorts uh, and a t-shirt. That's what's in here. And uh, that takes care of me for camp. That's my camp and sleeping gear. In here is my spare hiking setup. So if I get caught in a rainstorm, I fall in a creek, I have a dry t-shirt, dry under, underpants, and two sets of dry socks with liners that are in here. You've got to take an extra pair. That's the number one complaint. People in the morning, they got to wear it because your clothes is not going to dry overnight. So if you get into camp at the end of the day and you get into dry clothes, in the morning, whenever you get up, you're going to be putting on wet clothes again. And if it's 30, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, you're going to put on wet clothes. It's not fun. 
So you take that wet clothes, you hang it on your pack, and you hike during the day and it will dry. You put on dry clothes in the morning, and then the next day you just, you just reverse it. You put the wet clothes, you hang it, the clothes that had been drying all day, you wear that the next morning. So you're always wearing dry clothes. So that's, that's another thing that a lot, of, a lot of through hikers are starting to do now is they're, they're starting, not the ultralighters, but that's a whole, they're a whole different breed of person anyway, uh, hikers. Um, the average, the average uh, light hiker uh, that's starting to take dry, dry hike, hiking uh, gear, which is just a t-shirt, undershorts, and socks. That's all. You know, you still wear your pants, um, the same pants. Um, and, you know, so anyway, that's, that's, what, that's what's in there. So, that bag is empty. And then, at the very bottom, I have my uh, top quilt. It's a 30 degree top quilt, and it's in a dry bag. Now, this is my snizzle. This is the bag that I use to blow up my ear mattress. It's called a snizzle by XPED. And it's, uh, um, I use it as a dry bag for my, um, my top quilt, whether it's the 30 or the zero. When the weather gets colder, I, I put the zero top quilt in here. Same thing, this bag gets really big because you gotta blow it, you gotta fill it with air. And, that, and then you compress this bag, and this here tube hooks onto the the um, the, the um, nozzle on the air mattress to blow up the air mattress. You do not want to blow your air mattresses up with your breath, especially if they're insulated air mattresses. That bacteria and that moisture in your breath gets inside the fibers of the air mattress. You'll have to buy a new one every year, or they're going to get really gross because you're going to have mold growing on the inside. You always use a bag of some sort or a pump to blow up your air mattresses, especially if you're in the shoulder seasons or if you go into cooler weather because that warm air will condense in and you're going to have moisture inside your air mattress. Uh, not, not a good thing. Not a good thing. So that's it. That's my pack, 22 pounds. Uh, that's all the gear I have. Uh, when we get out on the trail, I will get more into the packages. I'll open them up and show you uh, exactly uh, how it works and uh, how my setup is. So hopefully that gave you some ideas. See you on the trail.